What is going on guys? Well, it's raining out, so we're gonna do a little tackle review. Um, I'm gonna go over some swim baits today. You know, everybody that's seen me fish already, they they know that I love the swim bait. I mean, I you don't usually catch it not on my boat any time of the year. It's a great tool and just overall great bait to find fish. I mean, I have three different type of setups that I will go over. Um, so the first one I'm going to go over is my bread and butter. It is a 734 Taipan. Um, it's considered a heavy, heavy fast, but um, it more feels like a medium heavy to me, uh, moderate fast, but it handles my heavier swim baits a little bit better. Anywhere from, you know, quarter ounce all the way up to three quarter ounce. That's usually what I throw on this. Um, five, you know, I mean, anywhere from a 4.3 to possibly a six inch soft, soft swim bait, just depending on what I'm throwing. Um, and on this rod, <clears throat> I'll use, I use 15 pound fluorocarbon. That's what I use for my heavier swim bait rod. It's, it's it's a strong i mean this is kind of one of my rods that i like to horse i like to horse the fish in i mean when i hook them i'm bringing them in i want them to i give them no ground and usually when you're fishing shallow that's kind of what this is i mean it's a little bit deeper but i burn it a little bit faster and it helps it keep it down in the water column so that 15 pound line kind of keeps me in that range of where how fast i reel it to how fast it's falling is the speed that i want so 15 pound test this is a i think this is a half ounce head so <clears throat> yeah that's a little bit heavier rod something that i can really pull them out shallow i mean we're talking smallies here too i'm not talking large mouth that's a whole different side of things for me um but for small mouth that is my heavy setup for swim bait fishing second I don't have anything rigged up on it right now, but <clears throat> this is a medium heavy 7.7 seven fast. It is a very long rod, yes, but I like it for fishing deep suspended fish um, that I have to make really long casts. And it helps me, you know, because honestly, when I'm fishing those deeper out fish, I'm not using heavy line. I'm using, um, this is 12 pound, and I go with something a little bit smaller. Lighter head, I mean, same type profile, um, 3.8, <clears throat> something that I really can slow down out there fishing for those fish that are way out deep. Um, and I cast long ways, I'm finding them a long, long ways away. So <clears throat> it helps me slow it down. Um, it just keeps it up in the water column, just real slow through the water. And sometimes that makes a difference. You know, I like that real long seven, seven, so I can make up a lot of ground when I'm that far out and having 12 pound test, it is a little bit lighter than 15, which is, I mean, 12 still strong, but when you're running stuff a little bit lighter, um, I, you know, I mean, it's just, it's the way I do it. Everybody does things differently. That's how I feel comfortable fishing for these fish. And, you know, everybody knows that some of those big fish, they suspend out 100 feet of water. I mean, that's that's what they do. So, yeah, that that is my, that is my more offshore swim bait rod. Uh, a lot of people will be like, oh, that's too long. That's fine. You know, do you? This is what I do. Just, that's how, uh, that's how I do it for the suspended ones. And then for my kind of finesse swimming stuff, um, when they're not really liking the bigger stuff and they're kind of keen on the smaller bait fish stuff, um, I'm running a 7.7 medium spinning rod. This is a Phoenix Feather. Um, I got it paired up with 12 pound braid, because I'll tell you that in a second, but <clears throat> 12 pound braid with either an eight or a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. 
in this sense, I have an eight pound liter and I was running a spin head mega bass with a small Hazadon shaft and it's just real, you know, compact, real light stuff. And this rod, I do like it for that. I don't use that, I don't use that finesse swimmer too much, but you know, stuff like the Easy Shiner, um, has a dong shad with the spin head. I mean, stuff real, real finesse like. I'm not much of a finesse fisherman, but I do do it. Um, and it does work, it does catch big fish but it's not my first option. So yeah, that's kind of that. But um, other than this this rod right here, this 7.7 seven medium, I use it a lot. That's why I have a 12 pound. I, if I was just running um, just swim baits on this rod, I would probably go to a 10 pound. But being that I do run tubes on this rod as well, I really like this as a tube rod and that's why I keep 12 on it um, because I usually run a, a 10, 10 pound fluorocarbon leader for my tubes. Um, and this, this acts as a hair jig, you know, a hair jig rod. Um, I use it for Ned sometimes. I use it for some jerk baits. I mean, this is an overall great rod to have in your arsenal for finesse fishing. It's awesome. Now, I'm gonna go over a couple different heads here. Not much. Um, just because I specifically have a way that I like to do it. Um, I used to throw swim bait heads a lot. I mean, they come in all sorts of different sizes, weights, types. I mean, you know, and like you saw before, like you saw before, the old spin head. Um, but I also do like ball heads, screw lock ball heads, and not just screw lock ball heads, but I do use, you know, I do pour my own as well. Um, just a simple ball head with a good heavy wire hook. Now, people will sit there and say, oh, I like swim bait heads, I like swim bait heads. I like them too, don't get me wrong. They're good for certain places and certain applications. But when I'm fishing for finicky smallies, I always go ball head. Um, I don't know if it's just why I do or what I do, but the difference between a swim bait head and a ball head jig. Obviously people are gonna say, oh, the line tied, this and this and that. Yes, 45 degree, 90, whatever. But the main thing about it, water displacement. That is my opinion. Uh, I think that when you're reeling it through the water, the water displacement off that head has something to do with it, of triggering those bites. I've, and you know, I've had buddies go out with me and I'm not even, you know, trying to gloat or anything like that, but I've had guys go out with me. They're on the same exact swim bait, but I'm using a ball head and he's using a swim bait head. And I was getting, astronomically a lot more bites than he was vice you know i mean like i said it's all preference it's what works for you but this is what works for me i use ball heads for my swim baits it's very important i think it is so just keep that in mind i mean before you go out and spend a bunch of money on swim bait heads because all oh, this is what they caught it on or this is what you know this is the craze and this and this and that keep it simple i mean you don't want to make things too complicated it's just simple ball head i mean uh, you know and don't get me wrong i love a good swim bait head this is a boxer some matt allen head um great swim bait heads don't you know i'm not knocking them at all but just the way that I fish and the way that I have found is I have better success with ball heads. So yeah, just keep that in mind next time you go out. I mean, some of you might already use ball heads and that might be all you use. Um, that's kind of why I'm having this little video. So yeah, other than that, 
I mean, that's just kind of the setups that I go through um, fishing for smallies on my swim bait rods. I don't have, you know, a ton of, eh, and don't get me wrong, I do throw, I do throw the bigger stuff too, huds, I mean, glide baits and stuff like that. I do have a heavier, heavier stuff, heavier rods for swim baits, I guess you can say. Um, but this is just going to be my main little setup for your normal paddle tail swim baits and soft swim baits and stuff like that. You could throw some harder swim baits, um, smaller jointed stuff, smaller glides on a couple of these rods. But as far as soft stuff, this is, this is what I do. Um, so yeah, I, I, like I said, I do throw the bigger stuff as well. I mean, that might be a video down the line, um, talking about the bigger setups that I do have and the bigger things, swim baits, a rigs, that stuff as well. But for now, I think we're just going to stick, stick to the little bit of just the swim bait, uh, smaller swim bait world for now. Um, I do have it in my hand a lot. You will see me with it in my hand a lot and there's nothing better than a good swim bait bite. But right on, if you guys like this video and more of this stuff and uh, just explaining what I do to catch these smallmouth, yeah, just shoot a like, comment. I mean, let me know, you know, definitely subscribe because I'll be coming out with a lot more of this stuff. And I think if you guys enjoy it um, and just put a little bit more content out, just kind of show you guys like what I do and how I do it. Um, everybody has their own niche and that's the cool thing about fishing is everybody does something different and uh the more you can share to you know catch these big fish man it it's something that i i hope everybody can experience catching a giant smallmouth there's just something about it that uh, makes you go crazy a little bit you know because every time you go out it's something different and you think you can be on them and you're just not the next day or a week later that's uh you got to be out there a lot to figure these fish out and really kind of key in on what they're doing but a swim bait is a great place to start that's why i'm doing a little review on like how i do it and i hope you guys kind of maybe learn something from this i don't know you guys could have or just want to see what i'm using to catch them i don't know um but yeah, stay tuned because we got a lot more coming. So yeah, make sure you guys like, subscribe, and follow along.